Okay guys, so the videos are going to be split into two different types of videos. So I'm going to do some tutorials on how to draw like Quentin Blake. And then I'm going to do the daily doodles where I just choose a drawing to draw and just talk you through how I do it. So this lesson today or this video today is going to be uh, a little bit of a tutorial and a first step in drawing like Quentin Blake. So as you can see, I've got my, my doodle pad here. Uh, and this is where we got to last time. And since last time, I'm just going to go through the drawings I've done so far, and then I'm going to give you uh, some activities to do. So here we can see I've done some uh, creatures in the style of Quentin Blake, and I've been trying out the school watercolours here. Now, I use professional watercolours. Um, they're not the best in this book because it's not a watercolour book. Uh, but I wanted to try out the watercolours because these are the ones you're going to be using in class. Uh, and then some of the tutorials, I'm going to use my own watercolours, but some of the lessons I'm going to use the school ones as well. OK, so just some uh, creatures there. And then uh, I decided to do a full page spread on two uh, things here. I quite like the way this has come out, the hot air balloon. And then I just thought I did a, a bike that was also a helicopter. OK, so that's my own idea based on some Quentin Blake ideas. Then I drew this lovely girl with a cat kissing her cat. And this is supposed to be my son who's a dr who plays the drums and he's playing his drum kit just there, okay? Then this is one of my favorite pages so far is I just wanted to draw a load of cats in the style of Quentin Blake, try out different watercolor techniques with those as well. So that's some cats. And then I tried to do on World Book Day, I did uh, Willy Wonka, okay? And so that's what I did on World Book Day. And then I did this picture of a girl singing with her brother and her hair, the hair swept back and, and so on. Um, and then I just did some random pictures here of different things, mainly just from my imagination. Okay, and then I tried different faces for witches, which we'll do a tutorial on separately, how to draw witches. Um, so I just wanted to try out different techniques there and different ways of getting the watercolour to work on this paper. Uh, and again, another picture I quite like is this old man with the owl carrying his shopping and his sleeping bag, maybe sleeping rough. And then I drew, I wanted to draw a load of parrots um, and I quite like the colours on some of these. I wanted to try out how it blends and how different colours work together. So that's just a, a page on parrots. And then the last two drawings I've done so far, I did the enormous crocodile, which I'm not too happy about too happy about. I'm not entirely happy with the colour of the green. I'm not entirely happy with the way he looks like he's crouching down here. But the top half isn't too bad. And then I was watching something on guitars last night, so I decided to draw a guitar player with this rainbow music coming out of his guitar. So we've got to the end of that. I've done uh, 33 pages so far. I'm only about a third of the way through the book. And now I'm just going to talk to you about some of Quentin Blake's drawings and what you need to focus on next. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do faces in the style of Quentin Blake. And this is the page uh, that I've done, and I'm going to show you how I got there. OK, so I've zoomed into this page and I'm going to show you some of the things you want to start off with. OK, and we're going to talk a little bit about drawing faces in the style of Quentin Blake and different features of the faces and the main ways he does things. So I've zoomed here. Now, this is A5. If you imagine, this is like half a page of A4. OK, so what you want to think about when you're doing this. My page is a bit smaller than yours. So think about half a page of A4. You might want to cut it in half and then do your drawings around this. So I'm going to talk about uh, some of the features first of all. So first of all, let's talk about Quentin Blake's, how he draws eyes. Now there are two main ways. Okay, the first one is he will do egg shapes. Okay, not always closed circles with dots for the eyes. So that's number one. Okay, so those type of eyes. The next type of eyes is just, he will do dots. Okay, so that's type number two. Okay, now, uh, next thing you wanna think about is noses. So there's uh, three main ways he does nose when we're looking straight on. So the first one will be nose number one, which is like an arrow shape. Okay, so that's nose number one. The second one would be a, like a sausage. So that's nose number two. And nose number three is a little bit like a, a mini elephant. So you basically come down like so around. That's like one ear and then you put the next. So that's going to be nose number three. OK, so you've got 
eyes, noses. I'm not gonna, there's lots of ways he does mouths, but I'm just gonna focus on a couple. So the first one is just a line, so you might just do a line to show a happy face. Okay, the next one is often just a scribble. Okay, and if you wanna draw lips, you just draw a line with two mountains and a lake underneath, and that's the lips. Okay, so I'm just gonna focus on those three uh, sets of mouths, three sets of noses and two eyes. Now the best thing to do for this is I'm gonna draw a head, okay? Then I'm gonna choose an eye. So let's say we're gonna do egg eyes. So here's my egg eyes. Just draw my egg eyes. And this time I'm gonna choose an arrow nose and a happy face. And so that's face number one, okay? Face number two, let's just do another, let's try to keep it the same sort of size, okay? The key thing is you don't need to draw a full circle. I'm just gonna hold this off. I have, have, have added some ears here, and you could actually put a couple of bits of hair in there as well if you wanted to as well. Okay, so I'm just gonna put the ear in, and this time let's do some dot eyes, sausage nose, and a squiggly mouth, okay? And then I'm just gonna do a bit of messy hair, okay? And the whole idea is I'm just going to fill up my page with different ways of doing this. So this time I'm going to do uh, egg eyes and I'm going to do a uh, mini elephant nose and then I'm going to do lips on this one. OK, and then this is going to be some curly, whiffy hair coming out like that, and maybe a couple of ears. OK, and then I'm just going to do another one, maybe a square of face this time. I'm just going to do dots, and this time I'm going to do an arrow, and then I'm going to, let's do uh, a squiggle, okay? Okay, so those are the three, these are the main ways that you can draw uh, Quentin Blake faces. So I'm just going to carry on. Why don't you have a go? You can draw some faces like this and use the different techniques. So uh, this one, I'm just going to draw and put the hair in, and this time I'm just... You could change the shape of the eyes to see, or even where they're looking as well. This time you can maybe make a different arrow and then maybe a sad face, okay? Now I'm just gonna add a little neck to these as well. So guys, why don't you have a go at drawing lots of different Quentin Blake faces using these different techniques? Uh, and I'll come back at the end and show you what I've done. Okay, so I'm back now. I've, what I've done is I've gone over it with the pen, and this is a permanent pen. Uh, these have been ordered for you so that you can um, do this as well. So much of much of Quentin Blake's drawings are done with a with permanent ink and watercolor. So uh, in this case, what I did obviously was go with pencil first, and then I've gone with the pen. But Quentin Blake often goes straight in with a pen. So. What happens there is if you make a mistake, you can't mask it. So I'm just gonna do a few faces here with just the pen. So I'm just gonna uh, just be brave. And sometimes you can see that actually the drawing is often better because it's more spontaneous. Okay, so that's my next face. Right, let's do a sausage and let's do a squiggle. Okay. Um, and you can see these draw, these are much more spontaneous. These are much more thought out. And this is the style you want to go for, this, this very rushed looking style. Let's just do one more nice round face. And let's do uh, egg eyes, little egg eyes. Let's do uh, elephant nose. And let's do lips. And then let's do a hair that comes down around the side here and the neck. Okay, so those are my, I've done 10 faces there, or 11. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to talk to you a little bit about watercolour. So uh, here's the watercolour palette that you're going to be using. Uh, now I'm going to do some separate tutorials on different ways of working with watercolour, but for today we want to keep it simple. And we're just going to go with a simple wash. And we're going to think about two colours. Now I tend to, for skin colours, I, I mix different colours. So I mix reds and whites and uh, buff colours to make... Um, different variations of skin tone, or I might use some browns for some darker skin colors. So, but I want you to focus on this too. So this peach color here, the third one in, okay, is good for light faces. And this one here, uh, which is burnt umber, is good for dark faces, okay? And then, but other, you can use any faces. You can go for green faces if you want. It doesn't really matter. So um, 
I'm just going to mix up the paint. Now the idea here is really key. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep adding water and I'm just going to keep keep this moving over top to get the pigments moving about. I'm going to add a bit more water. Okay. Now because they're new, they're all a little bit dry and they just need a bit of water put into them. So I'm just going to get my palette out and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a space where I'm going to mix lighter colours. So I'm just going to use this section here. It's always important when you're mixing that you want to keep your yellows as far away from your blues as you can. Uh, but we'll talk about that in another video. So here's my light colour. I'm just going to keep adding that there. Okay. So let's do a few light faces. So at the moment, now it's always good to have another piece of paper. So I'm just going to use this post-it note. Uh, another piece of paper where you can just see what happens, whether it's too dark, whether it's too light or so on. So I'm quite happy with that. So let's just do a face. So let's just come in. And I'm not worrying about everything. Now you can see at the moment, this is actually a little bit too dark. So there's one way to make it lighter, which is just to add more water. So in the palette, I'm just gonna add a bit more water. Okay, and take some, as much of the paint off my brush as I can. And let's just go in, so that's much better. Okay, and I'm just gonna roughly, I'm not worrying if I've got little bits missed out. Let's just do this one. Okay, you can leave a little bit of white cut shining through and that's fine, that's what Quentin Blake does. Let's do this one here. Okay, the ears, and so on. Okay, so that's how you just paint. And you can see that I'm just using the brush, I'm using the point of the brush just to move the paint around the, the area. And if you make a mistake, that's fine. If you make a really big mistake, you can just go in and block that out. Just take that as much of that out as you can. Then you can add a bit more in if you want to. Okay, so just a tissue to blot it out. So that's... Just a few more faces. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to add a tiny bit, okay, of this red here, this vermilion, okay, and I'm just going to add a bit of that to that, and you can see how it just subtly changes it to a bit more of a pink, okay, so I'm just going to add some water, I'm going to test it out, I can test it actually, test it out on there, that's fine, let's test it, it's good. So let's just do this face here, and you can see that already that there's a slight difference in the tone much more fleshy looking colour. All right, and let's just do one more. Uh, actually, let's just leave it there. Okay, and now I'm just, I'm just gonna add a bit to these noses here and around the mouths just to add a bit of colour. Right, the next thing I do then, I'm gonna do some darker skin. Okay, so I'm just gonna use this raw umber. Just gonna add some water in here. Okay, now it's important that when you're mix in the, I just drag my brush along it okay don't you know stab the paint just br run your brush across the top okay twisting it and so on and then I'm going to take some of that transfer it onto my palette okay and then you could actually use a bit on this page so if you look at that I think that's a little bit dark so I'm just going to add a bit of water okay and I get as much of the pigment off as I can and then I'm going to go in and I'm just going to do some darker skin, okay. So lovely, that's that. Do this one. And then this one, I'm just gonna add the two together. Just mix that up a bit so it's a bit of an in-between color. And then I'm just gonna do that one with that color. Like I say, we'll do another video on, on mixing for skin colours uh, in another video. Okay. So that's that. Now, what you can do if you find, so there's a pool of colour there. What I can do is I just take all the pigment off my brush. And then what I can just do is if I just dip my brush into the, the pool of colour, what it will do is it will take out, it's called lifting out, okay? And you lift out the colour from where you didn't want it. So if you've got too much like here, you can actually lift it right out or you can just blot it like so. Okay. But make sure if you're blotting, you go straight down, straight up, otherwise you smudge. So that is uh, my faces so far. Now what you could do if you wanted to, you could add some uh, hair color. So I'm just going to go in here. I'm just going to choose this yellow here. And 
and I'm just actually that's mixed in with it so I'm just gonna that's a sort of mousy brown color and then what I can do is just do that around there okay a uh, bit more yellow okay and notice it's really quite messy the way I do it so it doesn't have to be perfect but you can use whatever hair color you want some blondes some browns whatever you choose and notice that I'm I don't I'm not trying to color in between the lines okay sometimes the color suggests the hair sometimes the lines suggest the hair so if I just choose a bit more yellow here I'm just going to come up there and actually the I don't have to stay within the lines okay so those are some of my heads so far using the school watercolors why don't you have a go at filling out a page with lots of different faces and practice drawing the faces with different types of eyes, noses and mouths, but also using different color watercolors to uh, color them in uh, and then see how you get on. I'd love to see some of your work. OK, and then I will also if you've done some good work and your teacher shows me, I'll post those up to show everybody as well. So, guys, until next time, enjoy drawing faces in the style of Quentin Blake and I'll see you soon.